Great, in this video, we're going to talk about feasibility. And I mentioned briefly um, in my other video on what is a business pitch competition, um, the importance of capital. So one of the things for feasibility is you can show what kinds of capital that you currently have and how that can help launch the business to, or sustain the business or possibly launch it to the next level. Do you have sufficient financial capital? In other words, do you have the money to make this a viable business? And if you do, explain it very briefly. Hey, I've got $100,000 for my savings that I'm going to use for this business. Hey, we've made, you know, on average this amount of money. We've got this profit margin. You know, just say it very, very briefly. Okay? Then, what you want to do is explain that you've got the human capital. You know how to do whatever it is you know how to, that you're trying to do. You know, someone, one of my students said to me, well, hey, Dr. D, I don't really want to work with you on a pitch competition because I'm afraid that you're going to steal my idea. And I said, well, you know, what is the idea? And they kind of explain it very briefly. And I said, but that's something like engineering focus. Like, I, I don't have the intellectual capacity, A, to understand exactly what you're doing, and B, to copy it even if I did. In fact, I can guarantee to you that if I went back in time knowing everything I know about the world today, I still couldn't replicate Facebook. I just don't understand computers that well. So I don't have the human capital uh, to do that. Social capital. Explain to the audience that you've got friends that will help you. You've got friends that are working for you. You've got friends that are customers. You know people in the community. You know people in the industry. Social capital is huge. And in fact, I would almost put the social capital above the human capital. You know, when you look at the team composition for a new venture, Pitch judges are looking at, looking at it this way. It's not a matter of whether you've got the best and brightest individuals working for you. It's whether those people that are working with you or for you have sufficient personal chemistry to make the venture last in the long run. So in other words, if you say, you know what, I'm working with my buddy Dave. We've been friends since we're six. We do everything together. We understand each other. He's the charismatic guy. I'm the engineering guy. Together, we're a great team. Okay, you know what? That works. That's social capital. What you don't want to say is, yeah, I've got an MBA from Harvard, my buddy has uh, an MBA from Stanford, and we talked this idea over coffee, and it seemed like a good idea. Well, you don't have any chemistry with that person. In fact, if it's an MBA from Harvard and an MBA from Stanford, they both probably have pretty good egos, and they're not going to get along. You know, I kind of draw on this analogy. I was watching uh, the Olympics. Oh, this was years ago when I was an undergrad. And we had, like, the best basketball players go for our Olympic team. I mean, you know, Laker, Lakers players. I mean, everybody that was just absolutely the best that America could offer. And we got beaten by some team from, like, Serbia, right? The individual Serbian players were not as good as the individual American players, but the Serbian players had better um, cohesiveness and better teamwork, and that's why they were able to beat the USA team, right? So you want a team that's going to be cohesive, because quite frankly, when you're doing a business, there's going to be lots of long nights, lots of long, uh, lots of tears, lots of frustration, and you know what? You need to have that relevant social capital to make it work. And you also need to explain how individuals have complementary skill, complement, uh, complementary skills. Let me give an example of this. I remember doing a pitch a couple of years ago, and the judges were very patient. And there was a guy up there, he was a brilliant engineer, but he just, he had no people skills, no communicative capital. And he couldn't explain his idea, and they asked him some questions, and he just gave these answers that nobody could, could follow. And his dad was in the audience. He said, no, Jake, tell him like this. And so he would repeat it. And like, uh, the judge was like, um, okay. But they understood. And then they asked another question. The this, this son was messing up. And then the dad's like, no, Jake, tell him like this. And then he would just repeat it. And finally, the judge says, Is that, are you his dad? And he's like, well, yes, I am. He said, why don't you just come up here? And what would happen is they'd ask the dad the question. The dad would look at the son. The son would explain it to the dad. And then the dad would translate it to the audience. Right? But you saw, because his dad was working with him on the project, you saw there was a really tight father-son bond. And you know what? That works. That enhances the feasibility of this particular operation. Now, don't count on this. Most pitch judges are not that tolerant and not that patient. This was kind of an exceptional case. But remember, make sure that you've got kind of a, a cohesiveness as a team. That's why I place social capital at a huge premium for uh, feasibility. Great. So we've talked about feasibility, we're going to talk just a little bit about ethics, and then we'll finish up with the legal. And you know what, I think I'm going to do one more video on kind of wrapping up everything uh, together, kind of a concluding video. So great, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, or post some comments down below. See you then.